Hi, this is Edward Awad, and welcome to this lesson on the fundamentals of enzymes. In this video, I will talk about the role of enzymes in lowering the activation energy of chemical reactions. I will talk also about how enzymes work and the effect of substrate concentration on the rate of enzymatically catalyzed reaction. The rate of a chemical reaction is independent of delta G, which is the difference in free energy between reactants and products. The rate of a chemical reaction is rather determined by the size of the barrier that must be surmounted for the reaction to proceed. This barrier is known as the activation energy barrier. For a reaction to be initiated, a certain amount of energy is needed to kickstart the reaction. This is known as the activation energy of a reaction. The activation energy can be illustrated by the example of this ball that sits in a hole. To tip the ball off its perch and therefore roll it downhill, you will need to apply energy to bring it out of the hole so that it can roll down by itself. That energy applied is equivalent to the activation energy of a chemical reaction. Let's look at another example, that of combustion, to illustrate further the concept of activation energy of a reaction. The burning of wood is an oxidation reaction involving oxygen and the chemical compounds found in wood. Wood doesn't burn by itself. It needs a flame to start the fire. The initial flame is the activation energy. Once ignited, the wood burns by itself. To speed up the rate of certain chemical reactions, a, cat a catalyst is needed. What catalysts do is that they speed or increase the rate of reactions by lowering the activation energy barrier. In biological systems, enzymes act as catalysts and therefore lower the activation energy of biological reactions that happen in cells. Notice here that while the activation energy needed to start the reaction is lowered by the enzyme, the delta G of the reaction does not change. Therefore, enzymes are biological catalysts. And there is a multitude of different enzymes. Each one is highly spe specific for its substrates. An enzymatically catalyzed reaction starts with the binding of the substrate molecules to a specific site or sites on the enzyme known as the active site or sites where catalysis takes place. This binding between enzyme and substrate molecules results in the formation of enzyme substrate complex. The active site of an enzyme has a very specific shape and therefore determines the specificity of the enzyme to its substrates. Likewise, substrate molecules possess high affinity for the active site of their corresponding enzyme. Upon binding to its substrate molecules, the enzyme changes shape. It is this change in shape of the enzyme that facilitates catalysis. As a result, the substrate molecules readily form a transition state where the activation energy is lowered due to the proper orientation of the substrates for the reaction to proceed. This results in the formation of products by breaking of bonds or formation of new bonds, or sometimes the transfer of molecules or particles between substrate molecules. The products formed have low affinity for the active site and therefore dissociate from the active site. The enzyme remains unchanged after completion of the reaction and its active sites are ready to accept new substrate molecules. Some enzymes require helpers in the form of additional molecules to function as catalysts. Examples of these helpers include cofactors, which are inorganic molecules or ions that are essential for certain enzymes to function. A common example of cofactors are magnesium ions. Coenzymes are similar to cofactors but are inorganic in nature. They typically contribute to the cat catalytic reaction by acting as co-substrates, meaning they are changed by the reaction and therefore from the enzyme active site upon completion of the reaction. An example of a coenzyme are electron acceptors that are involved in accepting electrons from substrates that are oxidized by certain enzymes. An example of such coenzyme is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, or NAD, which acts as a cofactor for the enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, or GAPDH. And lastly, prosthetic groups, 
which are organic or inorganic components that are permanently bound to the protein portion of the enzyme. Removal of a prosthetic group from an enzyme causes the denaturing of the enzyme. An example of enzymes with prosthetic groups are metalloenzymes, which contain firmly bound metal ions such as zinc or iron to the active site of the protein portion of the enzyme. The rate of an enzymatically catalyzed reaction can be measured as the rate at which substrate molecules are formed. If we conduct an experiment in which we measure the rate of catalytic reaction under different substrate concentrations and plot the results, many enzymes will show the following graph. At low substrate concentration, the rate of the reaction increases in a linear fashion. At intermediate substrate concentration, the rate of the reaction slows down. And at high concentration, the rate of the enzyme catalyzed reaction does not change and therefore reaches maximum speed. This observed plateau at high substrate concentration is due to the fact that all active sites are occupied and involved in catalysis and therefore saturation point is reached. 